Yes, welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to a brand new Tales of Heroes video replay review number 34. This is going to be a very interesting replay review. We've got uh, Langris here for you, and it's one of the new custom maps they added in 1.6. And uh, apparently, it's a little bit overpowered. That's right, the map is overpowered. You heard me. I said it. And we'll find out why. Fairly soon, I am Bridger for the Team Sports Cast Network. Here joining me, as always, is my co-host, Vittensby. Again, welcome to the program. Great to be here. Had a great barbecue with my family, and i um, happy that we can finally record uh, this video replay review against uh, Cash Cashel. I'll just call him Cash, like I did when I did a shoutcast of one of his games on Game Replays against EXEXE. -E commonly known as EXE. So, uh, yeah, this is Langris. We've never featured this uh, on the show before. I've heard a couple things from the players, which uh, I was thinking a new thing that we would do is get uh, the players to give, like, a, you know, couple list a couple things about the match that they played, get their thoughts. So hopefully at the end of every video replay review now, we can get the players' thoughts on the particular match and share that with you guys along with our uh, final wrap-up at the end. Yep, it's going to be fantastic. Just a couple of quick notes I wanted to mention. If you haven't listened to the audio show that goes along with uh, this video replay review this week, shame on you because we've got a lot of excellent news on opposing fronts. You're definitely going to want to check out this audio show. Some interesting things, for example, a ranged team auto match has been confirmed. We discussed that. And a couple of the other things, vehicle path thing is going to be fixed. Weather will be added to the original Company of Heroes in a patch. Tune in for this and a lot of other great info on that, uh, on that audio show uh, number 34 this week uh, here, tales.tsncentral.com, T-A-L-E-S dot T-S-N-Central.com. Other important stuff, if you haven't listened to the audio show, that you should know, we have a contest going on. Uh, Vittensby, why don't you tell them about this contest? It is for, uh, we have 10 beta keys for World in Conflict, an upcoming closed beta for World in Conflict that is invite only to, uh, to give away. So what do they need to do to get these beta keys from Tales of Heroes? Well, they just have to basically answer five pretty easy questions that we put out there, uh, a couple based on the game. The first one was uh, what is just general name for you know certain abilities that you can use on, on either side, such as like napalm or you know uh, nukes um, or artillery barrages, things like that. That's the first question. The second question is uh, what are the four different roles that you can play? Like um, Bridger pointed out when he made the post, you know, think like companies, doctrines in Company of Heroes. Um, third question was which was which is uh, Bridger's favorite side to play as, or my favorite side to play as. And the fourth and fifth question were uh, so that one was only the fans I think would really know that, and that's what you know we're kind of arranging this for the fans. So. Um, and then the fourth question was, as it's posted on the website, um, what was the fourth question, Bridger? <laughs> uh, shame on you. Fourth question, would you be interested in a Tales of Conflict show, in a show for World in Conflict? And the last question is, would you subscribe to a Tales of Heroes subscription program if it gave you, uh, for $5 a month, if it gave you an extra video replay review, uh, iPod-type formats or other type formats that you wanted, uh, access to all the older content, all the older Tales of Heroes stuff, um, and a few other things, definitely go to the website and check that out, tales.tsncentral.com, T-A-L-E-S.tsncentral.com. It's one of the most recent posts here as of uh, the 28th of May. So check that out. The contest ends this Tuesday, so make sure that you get it in by 11.59 p.m. Pacific time on Tuesday. Uh, what is that? would be the 29th. So definitely yep. check that out. It's on the website. Got all the details there. Last thing before we get started... A little bit of erratic. Well, one today. more thing. One more thing oh, I have ahead. to say about that. That that was my way of passing it off to you, by the way. But uh, no, I just really wanted to give a, a special thanks to my coworkers at Vivendi and also the Vivendi marketing department in particular for providing those keys for our fans. So um, I just really wanted to give them a special thanks for that because uh, obviously without them we wouldn't be able to you know give you such a, a sneak preview so to speak of a game that's going to be coming out you know big in game, the fall. Big game. And it's a big huge game. It's already in CPL. 
Um, a lot, it's you know pretty pretty. It's one of those up and comers that's going to be mm-hmm. definitely a huge title this year. So it's a really good opportunity, and I mean, we get you know ten ten of our fans are going to be able to play a game you know, months before it comes out. So it's like I don't know. I guess we're gi- kind of not giving you a free game, but giving you a free game to play for a while. So right. uh, yeah, all right. And Last- if and <clears throat> and if you know you guys like this kind of thing, hopefully you know we could arrange this to be done in the future with other games, including you know opposing fronts and and uh, you know no stuff promises, like that. no promises. We're hoping that's we don't have any deals of that nature made yet, but we're hoping, we're hoping. Um, so last thing, uh, survey. We have an audience survey for the Tales of Heroes audience. Really would appreciate it if you guys could go to the Tales of Heroes website, tales.tsncentral.com, and fill out this survey. There's a link on the right-hand side. It's very quick, less than five minutes. It's just general demographic information about yourself. Also, it's information that will help us improve the broadcast. So, you know, different things, demographic stuff that will help us potentially get advertisers for the show so that maybe we can devote more time to the show so that we can potentially get more shows like this out there for other games because our hope is to not have to necessarily, uh, you know, work other jobs to pay for the bills when we could be doing a really good job of making these shows and giving you guys some great content. So if we can get some advertising on here, that opens the possibility of get, upgrading our equipment, getting better quality video stuff in the future. So very good to get us advertisers. It will only help you guys. We'll turn that right around and improve the quality of the show, give more shows potentially in the future if we can make enough money so that I can quit my day job. That's my ultimate goal. So. Please do us a favor. Head on over to the Tales the website and uh, just fill out that survey. It takes less than five minutes and other information on there like what do you like most about the show, what do you like least about the show will help us tailor the show in the future to you guys. And we've also made a deal to show you guys how much we appreciate it. If, you can, if we can get 750 people to fill out that survey, we will give you an extra video replay review within the next month after that number rolls over to 750. So if 750 of you guys, there's about 3,000 plus maybe a little more people that download Tales of Heroes videos on a regular basis. If about 750 of you can get that filled out, we will absolutely get you an extra video replay review with no extra charge. Since you charge nothing, then that's a good thing. Uh, and if you get to 1,500, we'll get you another one, extra extra one outside of the regular one we do per week. And if you can get to 2,000, then we'll definitely get you the Tales of Heroes War as soon as possible. We're just having a problem finding similar times to be online and playing Company of Heroes to get that working. Plus, maybe Vittensby will be rusty enough that it'll actually be a good game by then. So, please fill out that survey. Also, big thanks to everybody who thanked us in the thank thread on GameReplays.org. I think you know who you are, and let's get into the game and stop uh, spouting words. This is not the audio show. Here we go. Uh, we are at the five-second mark on Langris here. Let's give a quick rundown of the map. We've got victory points one, two, three in the middle. Interesting strategic points next to each side's base uh, that control not only the left but also the right side, which is very Angville-esque. I've made up that word. So you take this strategic point, for example, and you take the middle strategic point, and the northern player is completely locked off from these resources on the left. And similarly, if you take this this strategic point on the right or this strategic point in the center, then uh, you know the right side is locked off. There's you know lots of stra- There's four strat points, um, two for each side, and then one in the middle, which is very crucial because that one allows you access to all the sections of the map. So holding that center seems like it'll be a very important task. We'll see how it plays out here. Plus 16 munition point on the left. Uh, and plus 10 fuel on the left, whereas there's uh, two plus 10 fuels on the right. So it's a very interesting split. And I think we'll see the right being just about as important as the left, but we'll have to find out. I'm just going to get it started, Vittensby, then you can finish up with your thoughts on the map layout. We're here at the five-second mark. Five, four, three, two, one, and go. All right, Vittensby, what do you think? How do you think this map's going to play out? Not entirely sure. This was the both of these players had never played on this map before, and I believe this was the second game that they had played out of four, and they felt that this was the closest one out of uh, the four uh, games that they had had played. Uh, I, th- I definitely think that um, the right side. Hold on, just a sec. All right, let me finish the sentence. The right side is overpowered. No. Uh, all right, so we got. It looks like a standard uh, barracks opening for the allies. And we got a double pioneer start for the Axis. And actually, 
No, we do have two engineers. I just can't see. That's all for the allies as well. Following to see, looks like the there is a plus 10 munitions point next to each player's main base and a plus 5 fuel point next to each player's main base, which is very similar to Angaville, actually. There's two plus 10 munitions points next to each player's base, so there's going to be a, a good flow of munitions on this map, regardless of map control, it looks like. And we're seeing somebody head for the plus 10 fuel on the right-hand side. And he's going to be able very, to connect that. All right, go ahead. It is very similar to, to Angleville. Sorry, I got interrupted there just for a second. Um, yeah, as, as you can see, there are plus five munitions, and, uh, plus five fuel, and plus ten munitions next to each player's base. Um, the victory points are actually really close to um, each player's base. Now that yeah. I take a closer closer look at it, which is interesting, it seems like the middle point would be the the most point of contention. Um, it does have that Angaville feel to it, not only for the resources, but also that center road that kind of uh, divide the map, divides the map. There's also also those all important strat points, which you were talking about before the show. Uh, we do have a bike first opening, which uh, we saw last uh, bike, early bike, I should say. It's not bike first because I was distracted, but uh, that was kind of what we had uh, last week on on wreck train. Uh, that made for some interesting dynamic, but one thing to note is the Volk squad that's capping the plus 10 munitions um, has built the sandbags there, and I've noticed a lot of good Axis players doing that recently before they cap a point um, so that they can, you know, take less damage while they're doing it. Yeah, I've seen that actually. Actually, one of the first times I saw that was on the Bo Lowlands, where we saw the, end, the Pioneer build a, a sandbag there. Yeah, it was Nuvion versus Mexico. Yep. It was a good game. That was where the, the studs were overpowered. I think that was the game. And uh, we have a shootout at the OK Corral as these engineers and pioneers are trying to kill each other. Let's get back to this battle in 30 seconds, maybe 30 minutes, and see if somebody's actually won. But now we have uh, two rifle squads against one Volks. That's bad news for the Volks here. And I don't see any... Anything in sight that's going to help out this Axis player? Where is his resources? There he's got a second Volk squad only just getting onto the field. Why do you think that is, Vinsby? Not entirely sure, except for the fact that uh, he has two rifles. Uh, the alley player, <coughs> Cashel, Cashel, I always struggle with his name, uh, but uh, he went, uh, his two rifleman squads were right there, and the Axis player chose to go Volk's bike, so... Oh, the um, bike, that's what I missed, sorry. Yeah. Yes, the bike But we do uh, have the, uh, another Volk squad uh, coming up. I think uh, EXE feels that <laughs> maybe... Still after fighting. First game that this uh, map wasn't that great for MGs. Um, based upon the building locations, it doesn't doesn't really look like they're that the MGs that these buildings are really that uh, great for MG uses. But I'm just surprised that he lost his bike so early. Um, that could prove to be a fatal mistake, but not entirely sure. As you can see, this the Allied horde is kind of everywhere now. At yeah, once, and uh, I think that this map. With the wide open spaces, could could be particularly dangerous for for Axis. At least that's the way it seems to be playing out so far. Yep, yeah, uh, we'll have to see. I mean, Angaville is very wide open as well, but I mean, you see a lot of Axis fight for the left side, and it and it can work out. I don't know. Uh, I'm not a super pro, but we'll see how this one plays out. Um, uh oh, Rifleman caught oh, out man, in the open. Days. That's bad news for them. <laughs> and the XC says no. Ah, not yes. Gonna Very clever. Annihilate three of my two of my squads with one nade. Oh yeah, that definitely would have been bad if he hadn't moved up. But he was paying attention and he managed to do that. I, that that that's something I just can't do. I'm never paying attention to the battle because I'm always microing my engineers and pioneers and giving them shift click orders over on the left whenever a grenade is thrown because I'm just noob like that. So. Now we have a rifle squad in big trouble. Grenade inside, and he's out. And he's out. There's one trick that I've seen players do is they grenade the entrance to the house that they know the enemy is going to be exiting. So as soon as the enemy sees the uh, grenade th being thrown at the house, he quickly sends his unit, says his unit, just get out of there, get out of there, dig garrison, get out of the garrison, and then they run straight into the grenade. So you got to watch out for that too. Uh, that wasn't what just happened, but that's something that one of the one of the ways you can get by careful players who are watching and avoid your grenades at all costs. Exactly. Well, there's a lot of interesting uh, wrecks on this map. Um, you have a couple tank wrecks. One by the VP in the left side. One by the north player's base. 
It's a pretty it's a pretty map. In fact, so pretty that whenever I try to run it on my uh, semi old comp, which I should be getting new in the summer, um, it tends to lag up for some reason. I'm not having that now because I changed the resolution, but I never have that problem. I'm wondering if any of you guys have that problem. That's weird because it's a one v one map too, and you played on you know eight player yeah. maps that don't lag you <laughs> as much as this one. <laughs> Yeah, it must be it just has a lot of textures or something. A lot of maybe detail? It's just the, yeah, maybe it's just the richness of the map. It really is a pretty looking map. It has a nice kind of sunset feel to it. Yeah. Um, so we do have uh, MG, which looks like it's pretty easily flanked. Oh, man, perfect nade, and he dodged out of it. Wow. Time. He got a little bit of damage, but that was a good dodge. And here, uh, there was a very nice defense of the flank. Those Volks, even without the MP40s, two Volks are going to do a lot of damage up close. You know, not as much as uh, as a rifle squad or two would, but that was still a very good job defending that uh, machine gun. Because you know, we all know the machine guns. Once they get stuck shooting at something, they keep on shooting it until it's dead. They won't change to shoot at the target that's more dangerous. But looks like we've got a pretty much split down the middle, Axis and Allies. So the Axis controls the right-hand side, or is so very soon going to control the entire right-hand side. Looks like they're, that means they're going to be uh, getting a bit more fuel income. They should have a plus 15 as soon as they capture these two fuel points, whereas the Allies only have a plus 15 versus a, did I say 15, a 25, 20, 30. 30 total if you include the starting five. 30 versus uh, 20. 30 versus 20. There we go. Okay, I I, I do math. <laughs> we have a blitz being chosen in the first squad of stormtroopers on the field. Uh, even though <clears throat> EXE has been doing a great job of containing the right side, just the fact that I think riflemen cap faster, um, he's been able with one rifle squad to pretty much cap the entire left side of the map uh, pretty quickly. So um, this could uh -oh. be... Uh-oh, uh-oh, yeah. uh-oh! Ouch! And that was a... Pretty nice place to grenade. He didn't dodge that one. And uh, we have Cash's uh, two rifle squads being suppressed on the right side. This would be an interesting map with defense doctrine. It seems like there there's quite a bit of munitions um, floating yeah. around on this map. So um, maybe an early you know registered artillery would be a way to kind of hold down the map and, and stop rifle spam from being so effective. All right, so I mean, it's very, it's very fast, intense map. It looks like because of the because of the smallness of it. I think it's like, I think it's smaller than Angaville, or maybe it's the same size. I can't really tell. I think they're all pretty much the same size. I'm not entirely sure since this is uh, this is a uh, uh oh quick MP40s reload. Nice job. MG. He knew uh, that was coming. Move the MG right out of there. Oh, bad, bad deployment on it, though. It must have just deployed oh, automatically. Oh, man, and folks right into the building. Ouch! Lost two of them, but, uh, yeah, e EXT's got some great skills with, uh... He's <laughs> daring him. He's, like, saying, come on, throw out. another grenade. And it looks like that machine gun misdeployed yet again. I don't remember. What did you say caused that thing to deploy incorrectly? No, I don't think it, it misdeployed. When he probably clicked to exit the building, it set up. No, and then he set it up like, again, and uh, it didn't shoot, so he moved it into the building, I think. Hmm. Not sure about that. Um, so while the Axis is recovering back at his Violet base, it seems like the Allies have been, been pretty much pushed... Well, I wouldn't say pushed off the map, but I think now it's the Allies' turn to kind of reinforce. Yep, so we have a little bit of a... Game going on over at the left here. The plus 10 fuel on the left. Good job at sneaking around and decapping that by the Axis player. 433 to 486. Nobody's in, the, in control of the middle the victory point. So the Axis player is winning by about 50 tickets. 53 tickets, points, whatever you want to call them. Yeah, it's interesting. Another grenade. Wow, that's tons of grenades. That yeah. Thrown and, and really the Allied player still has 100 munitions right now. Yeah, and... Uh... EXE's sitting around with 200. I'm so. surprised he hasn't upgraded any of his volts. Uh, he had that one squad. I'm not sure if he's uh, being overcautious oh, right. about a quick quad. How much fuel do we have over on the 148, outside? and I do not see any upgrades. Looks like he's got an engineer around waiting to uh, build something. 
We just hit tier 3 over here, and he has 93 fuel, so he does have enough for an armored car, Puma, and uh, Sturm Armory, but uh, let's just see if he can hold out long enough to get that out. Um, oh man, that's a really oh. grenade for the most part. But I mean, it was pretty costly. He almost lost that entire squad, too. Oh yeah, no, this is bad. Yeah, now we got... He's gonna be completely run off the map now. Ouch. Yep. Completely pulling back. Look at that rifle spam. I think uh, he might have had a better chance with more than one machine gun there so that he could cover the flank of that machine gun because just that many rifle squads, just to me, it's just like asking to get more than one MG so that you can cover the flank of the other machine gun. Yeah, one thing they had said was in uh, the first game, uh, EXE kind of went for a more traditional start I believe um, and then the second game after feeling that MGs just weren't really doing what they're supposed to do on this map that he felt that you know heavy Volks was uh, was a better alternative um, but uh, we'll see if he can pull it out I think teching up to uh, Sturm Armory uh, and now building the Sturm Armory is it's always a it's always a hard decision for for Axis because it's real easy to get pushed off the map and as you can see that's exactly what happened in this game uh, before he could get his plume out wow. he's been pretty much pushed off the map so wow is he gonna get away again he's gotten away with that grenade and like retreat with 0.5 health like six times that's really just luck right there that's really good luck and uh, he's lost, wow, the entire map because of uh, that rifle spam. That's, I don't know. That kind of makes me want to uh, have riflemen... Oh, no! Oh, that's why he moved it. Ouch. It makes you want to play allies, does it? No, 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 it makes me want to <laughs> nerf allies. <laughs> Just the rifleman capping speed seems to be a bit fast for a tier 1 unit. I don't know, maybe when they oh, get I upgraded agree. with... Uh, bars it goes up or something. I don't know. It just it just seems to me like I can't believe he took back you know, he took that entire right side in, you know, the short time that we were talking. Yeah, I agree. Um rifleman capping speed has always been a little bit fast, I think. Um it's especially hard on maps like Gangaville. I'm wondering why the Axis player hasn't been using any bundled nades, especially with these hordes of riflemen. Yeah, I mean, he does have 260, 270 munitions now, so... I mean, with that, I mean, maybe the thing he did wrong was not uh, just getting all his Volks upgraded and just charging all the rifle squad he has with two or three mp 40 Volks. I mean, throw all the grenades you want, you're throwing them right into your own feet, you know? Yeah. I mean, we've got a, well, we've got a tank depot up now, and he's probably saving up for a Sherman to counter that. Potentially an M10, but he's already got plenty of manpower, so I'm looking. I'm looking to see a Sherman coming out here soon. What yeah, what kind of fuel situation do we have? Is he going to be able to get a Stug to counter soon? Yeah, he's got enough fuel, but uh, he's, he has 70 fuel right now. So definitely, it's a it's a munitions and he's building a Stug right now. But it's definitely a munitions heavy map, and it'd be interesting to see like a Blitz Comcraft Center strategy uh, work with this with the uh, maybe two MGs and early mp40s and storms I see this uh -oh. in almost every uh -oh. game and I do it myself sending a puma right into the enemy base and then they'll pop out with a Sherman right when you get in there and it, or worse like an m10 something that can actually catch up to oh it. but nice micro nice micro he killed at least a couple oh no get out of there keep micro no bad micro bad micro <laughs> no why are oh this is terrible what the you were out! Why did you stop? Oh yeah, yeah. I guess he did, I don't know. Uh, he's gonna play ring around the tank depot. He's just trying to get in as much damage as he possibly can. Before I don't know. Gone. I think he could have saved that. He did a nice backup maneuver. The tank was still so trying to go around the tank depot. He could have been long gone on that road before the tank caught up. Yeah. I think that was this a bad decision a, to stay in there. This might be a good tier tier two map. Um. I don't know, either Blitz Comcraft Center now that Storms are a little bit cheaper if you want to go Blitz and have Tigers or a quick, uh, quick uh, Tier 2, not quick Tier 2, but um, Mass Tier 2 and quick Veterancy. Alright, so here comes the Sherman out to try and take out the... Uh, what happened to all the Storm squads? Did I miss something? Well, I think one got killed and the other one... I'm not sure if he called in two or not. 
I know he had a storm. Where that. did the one get killed? How did he got lose killed? The storm? There was a grenade that came, oh. that came off by that strap. The plus. It must have been while I was watching the puma. Point. Uh, it doesn't matter. Yeah, it was a. Because he could have. I mean, if he had saved that puma and not lost that storm squad, he could have had plenty of the ability to counter the Sherman with a Stug and a Panzer Shrek. Because I know he had a Panzer Shrek on that squad too. That would have been plenty to 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 fight this off. I just don't know if he could fight off all the all the riflemen squads that are that are on the field right now. Um, I guess especially, not. Yeah, so he, he basically resigned. One of the quickest, I think this is the quickest replays that we had on Tales of Heroes, certainly. Um, but there's reason for it, right, Bridger? It's Bridger. Memorial Day weekend, and we have had very little time. <laughs> well, not just that, but apparently, uh, I don't want to put words in people's mouths, but we'll talk about why um, Cash will think that Cash LL. He's gonna have to tell me how to pronounce that, but uh, why he thinks that the, <clears throat> this particular map is—he's not saying impossible to win as Axis, but re incredibly tediously difficult. Um, and I'm just gonna load up GR and open up my PM box, and I can read you guys what he had to say. All right, and excellent. This is kind of a kind of a new thing that we were gonna test out, and uh, no one's—I don't think really many people have played that map. Uh, before, so that, again, this was really new to these guys, and they did play four games on it. And uh, I definitely wanted to feature this particular map. Okay, so here's the top five reasons why. So he said, uh, I'll just read them off. We can go point by point and see what we think about that. He said, uh, number one, there are a large number of territory points that are very valuable, a ridiculous number of munitions points on the map, and three plus ten fuels. This gives an advantage to rifle spam and its ability to capture points. Um, I'm, I'll just add in, I think you meant faster there than Volks. Uh, what's your thoughts on that? I tend to agree. I would, I would like to see riflemen capture, like what is it? Riflemen capture at 1.5, Volks at 1? Is that how it works out? Exactly, and pioneers at 1 and engineers at 1. I, I wouldn't mind seeing riflemen advantage. are at like 1.25 and then grenadiers are at 1.5 or something. I don't know. I, maybe they get upgraded when they get bars. I don't know. It just seems to me, like he said, on this on this type of a map, you know, capping 50% faster than your opponent with the majority of your units is just ridiculously useful. Right, especially because Axis has to make machine guns. You can't pure Volk spam if they don't see a machine gun. They're just going to get quick bars. Right. And if anything, it would be the other way around. The Volk should be capping faster because the, because the Axis relies so much on building machine guns. That's very interesting. Uh, that's that's an interesting point to note. I, I agree with it, um, only as far to say that um, allies don't really have any units like you know storms or I mean they have paras they have rangers but you're not really gonna spam them you know yeah I guess uh, but, so, but that doesn't help but, the, the uh, early game I know they maybe don't when, they just maybe don't when have you upgrade Volks upgrade Volks with MP40s that's one of the things they get when you upgrade Volks with MP40s they can cap as fast as riflemen I think that would be a great great change I agree yeah that would be a really good trade-off right. so, or have anyway. pioneer anyways next one uh, two, he say writes, there are virtually zero choke points on the map. It's incredibly open, with only a few fences <clears throat> to regulate movement. <clears throat> this makes MGs incredibly hard to position, which I, I'm assuming is is why EXE, after playing the first game, did not want to really build machine guns. Uh, this makes MGs incredibly hard to position and very easy to flank. I would tend to agree with that. The fourth match, well, you know, we played. <clears throat> I mean, something, <clears throat> something, that, something that's always I thought about is that Volks have the ability to create choke points with barbed wire. Uh, so, theoretically, you could position a machine gun and, you know, roll out barbed wire, you know, a long distance to prevent flanking or at least force them to take a lot longer to flank around it. I don't know, that's always something that struck me as an option, but maybe there's just not enough time because you have to be capping all these points. Well, there's just never really enough time for that in a highly competitive match. Um... I mean, to to do a huge strip of barbed wire, and then now that wire cutters are free, 
you know, I, I just don't know. And then you, you don't have a point capped because of that, or even maybe two points capped because of that. It'd be interesting to experiment. I know we'll definitely feature another match on the show of, of uh, on this particular map, uh, just to continue on with the second point. Uh, the fourth match we played, uh, EXE built only Volks after recognizing this, and he said that he uh, was able to beat him by going just an atypical bars first when I realized this, you know, was what he was using. And I tend to agree with that. And with the amount of munitions that's on that map, I mean, suppression fire would just be so brutal, um, you know, if they're going to go mass folks. I think you always need two MGs regardless, just, you know, covering each other if you want to hold a position. Um, maybe um, EXE was being over ambitious trying to, you know, because these guys had never really played the map before, trying to hold, you know, maybe both sides. Maybe this is a both sides, you know, split sides kind of thing like happens on Ingeville, but there is no particular one strat point to cut off, um, especially because you could do like a, I don't know, you could do that on Ingeville too. Um, but you know what I'm saying, that it, it's maybe it's supposed to be played a little bit differently, but doing Volks first is def uh, Vol all Volks is, I think, is definitely a mistake. Yeah, I think I, I think there was a lot of mistakes by the Axis player that could have changed the outcome of this battle drastically. The the bike uh, dying too early was was a big problem, um, and a lot of luck in the Allies getting away, throwing a grenade at the last second, blowing up like four guys, and then hitting the retreat button and escaping with like .5 health. If you know even half the number of squads that did that, you know, had been killed instead of making it all the way back. You know, we would have seen a vastly different uh, mid-game when the Allied player would have had to rebuild those squads entirely instead of getting them back for a third of the cost or what have you. I agree. Um, yeah, there was a lot of a lot of times where those riflemen escaped with you know two percent health or something like that, and the early bike loss was definitely hard. Um, hard. That's to not say. to say the Axis player played poorly because those were some really good dancing around the grenades. No, he's EXC he is really, really good. You know, I mean, you could see right there, like you just mentioned. I mean, he dodged every one of those grenades except for I think one of them. So and he was definitely playing, I think, you know, one of his better games. But I, I just think that without having, I think allies will always have somewhat of an advantage if you do a matchup where Axis doesn't really, both players don't really know the map that well, um, just because you know rifleman capping speed and you know, oh, should I build? Riflemen or um, oh, what was that again? Oh yeah, more riflemen. Wait, <laughs> should I mix in a jeep? Do I need a jeep? You know, I mean, what is there to choose from? Where axes have? You know, should I get a bike? Should I get a Volk? Should I get you know mass MG? snipers? A sniper. Mass sniper is always the way to go, guys. <laughs> On an open uh, map just, where the enemy can charge directly at you, snipers are your best friend. He said uh, the third point was uh, there are only um, you know something. To, he said like two buildings, but I know what he meant that there's. There's only a few buildings on this uh, on the map, and although one of them is a gr in a great place for MGs, I think he was talking about that building that was kept on suppressing those riflemen by the t plus 10 munitions points. Um, it's incredibly easy to flank, and I tend to agree. Just looking at the layout of that, I don't really think any of the MG placements were really all that great and all that hard to flank or get around um, the buildings. But uh, you never know. I mean, an MG in a building protected by two Volk squads. That's, with MP40s, that's that's pretty hard to, to take down. Um, and certainly, if you know EXE was good enough to get get the MG and the Volks in and out, maybe you could you know we maybe you could do something about that in the future. But it definitely seems like definitely. I think my I think opinion, even a Allies small map. a small surrounding of that building, at least from the south, with uh, you know on the left and the right, and maybe on the bottom as well with. Uh, well, you'd have to get the range perfect, but maybe just far enough out from the house to prevent somebody from getting close enough to throw grenades. I think that would be very interesting to experiment with in, you know, putting, you know, just just far enough away in a small radius around the house, you know, the direction the enemy is going to come from, just so that if he wants to throw a grenade, he has to go all the way around the house, which is really going to open him up to being attacked by, you know, MP40 Volks if he's trying to run that far. So I, I, I kind of want to experiment with that. I want to see if that would be effective on a map like this where there is so few choke points where, you know, if you put a machine gun in that house, what if you put two machine guns in that house? Does that make it so the second machine gun might shoot at another unit or will they just both target one? It's too risky any way you look at it to put yeah. two machine guns in one house. But uh, 
What was I going to say? I think the saving grace about Angaville is for Axis is that there's a huge hedgerow in the middle that divides the map, and there's really only three ways to get through the hedgerow, at least initially, until Tigers and Pershings roll out. And that that's why, you know, you can do things like go to the left side of Ingaville. But on this, that's it's true. just completely wide open. There's some uh, hedges, anyway. but they don't seem to, to block too much. Uh, yeah. I, I would like to see maybe uh, those hedges continued a little bit more, and maybe that would help to, uh, on you know, to balance the map a little bit for Axis. Um, that'd be interesting. All right. Any, anything else Fourth. that he pointed out? Yeah, just two more quick points. The fourth one was the amount of munitions on the map make it very easy for allies to spam early abilities like nades or suppression fire without even caring. I mean, as we saw in that game, there was at least 10 grenades there. I'd, I'd still point um, out that MP40s would be very easy well, to spam as well. but Which gives them a significant advantage before Axis even have the opportunity and that's to true. use things like Panzer Shreks or MP40s. So... Um, I mean, because you you got to tech up to tier two, and yeah, you got to go squad down. If the guy chooses to get bars, then I mean that's that. But um, it does. But take I mean, time. teching up to get grenades or bars is cost more than teching up to tier two for axes. True, but uh, I just don't know. Maybe if not it, grenades. I haven't done the exact anyway. numbers how long it takes to upgrade, you know, BARs compared to tier two. But I'm sure tier two takes probably a little bit longer. But uh, and also, you know, you have to upgrade the MP40s, yeah, yeah, which is kind okay. of instant. And also, bars a universal upgrade. You don't want all your squads of Hulks to have MP40s, and grenades are pretty darn devastating when they actually hit. Blah blah right. blah blah blah. But I know your point. The fifth point, last point, he said, and this was you know a little bit long, but very well thought out. He said the most important points on the map, the three plus ten fuels and one sixteen munitions, are located in the right and left edges of the map separated by a lot of space. The 16 plus 16 munition and 1 plus 10 fuel is on the left, whereas the 2 plus 10 fuels are on the right. Since Axis are more suited to locking down one area of the map as opposed to splitting their forces, I think we all agree on that, they have a large amount of trouble contesting both sides of the map and often end up simply conceding one of them to the Allies, you know, and I'll just put my two cents in there, i.e. Angaville for the most part. Unlike Samoa, where this is mitigated by the fact that the middle is very strategically important space, the middle of Langris is essentially useless and just invites flanking from rifles on either edge. Uh, and that was his. I don't know. Point. I I still see the middle as very crucial for the simple point that that road that runs down the middle with the strat point connects everything. So you know, if you have that, it means it's a lot harder to. Uh, to cut you off from resources. So if the Allies have the entire left side and you hold that middle road, all you need to do is send one Pioneer Squad to decap the strap point, you know, on the left side there, and they've lost the resource, all the, all access to those extra resources on the left. Same thing for the right, for the most part. The entire right-hand side, that 20, 20 fuel and 20 munitions requires you to have one of two strat points. And if your opponent can cut off both those strap points, if your opponent controls the middle, then he only has to cut off one strap point. So I think that middle is strategically important just for controlling, not the same way that uh, that Samoa is important in the sense that you you need that section to move throughout the map, but you know that maybe that would be interesting. Maybe make the middle of this map a little bit more important by tightening up the hedges, you know, so that it makes it a lot harder to move throughout the map unless you're going through the middle. That would be an interesting proposition, but there's a lot of different things you could do. Anyway, uh, any final thoughts? I mean, I agree with everything that you're saying. I think the easiest way to do it would just be add a little bit of fencing here or there, so you'd have to use a flamethrower or a grenade to get through it. Maybe make it a little bit more choke point orientated, like uh, some of the, that the two players are kind of talking about. Um, so, I don't know, but we'll see. I mean, this won't be the, the last time. It's only the first time we feature this map on the show, and uh, hopefully, you know, we can get a better... Matchup, ne- well, yeah. not a better one, but a longer. I think that was a pretty intense game for the 17 minutes uh, that it was, and uh, definitely that's something that we'll do in the future. Um, what else was I going to say? Darn it, I lost my train of thought. But uh, right, I mean, yeah. there's no guarantee that their initial thoughts about the map are exactly true necessarily. They they do seem to have some good reasoning for those arguments that Axis have a lot harder trouble because because those are some pretty you know believable reasons. But we still have to. It still requires a lot more playtesting. You can't really necessarily judge a map from five games. No, I agree. I think one of the early strategies on Poe Lowlands was to go wire off that fence, uh, the break in the, 
you know, in the bottom right hand corner of the map, and then people were like, "Oh, rush the 16 munitions." And also, you know, people used to build really early bunkers on that, and then you, you know, stop seeing that. So, I think uh, as people play this map more, which is maybe why some of these maps, maybe not this one, or maybe you know, one of the three that they included in 1.6, should be an auto match, or like we were talking about when we first saw it, that they should add, you know, one a month so people can get used to it, and uh, that would be a good way to have more maps before opposing fronts. Uh, last thing to note is just, you know, these guys played four matches. I think maybe they even played five for the show. It's really difficult to get a really great match for the show every week. And, you know, sometimes I'll go and chat and, like, talk to the players and be like, you know, can you play? And then they'll send me an email saying, you know, we played five of them and we just couldn't get a good match. So then I'll have to go back and chat and get two other. I mean, one time it was like eight different people had to play for the show. So. You know, it's really hard to get a really outstanding match, and I think you guys know that, but I just wanted to stress, and I wanted to thank these guys for taking, you know, about two hours of their time this weekend in order to uh, to do this on, you know, holiday weekend. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Uh, so big thanks out to them. Big thanks out to everybody who's uh, tuned in to watch our show here. I think that's going to just about wrap it up. Don't forget, you can really help us out if you go over and uh, take the listener survey, the audience survey at uh, tales.tsncentral.com, T-A-L-E-S dot T-S-N-Central.com. On the right-hand side, you'll see the link to the audience survey. It takes less than five minutes. Don't answer any questions you don't want to. You know, just fill it out as much as you feel comfortable with, and uh, we'd really appreciate it. If we get a lot of those, 750 to be exact, you'll get an extra video replay review absolutely free of charge. Check out that contest for the beta keys for World in Conflict, and don't forget to send us feedback, tales of at tsncentral.com, T-A-L-E-S-O-F at tsncentral.com. Send us your feedback. What do you like? What do you not like? Questions for the show, comments, criticisms, whatever. We like to get it all. We do read every single email that comes in. i just like to stress that. Every single email that comes in, we read every single one of them. We just don't have time anymore to respond to the large quantity of emails that are coming in. We appreciate every single one we get. Thank you guys so much. Send us your video replay review, uh, potentially replays. That was a convoluted sentence. That makes no sense. Send us your replays that you might want to have in a video replay review. There we go. So, that's about it. I am Bridger for Vittensby. Tuning in next week would be awesome. <laughs>